My name is Renee Suazo, the brother of Eva Suazo. The death of my sister has tormented my family for almost going on three decades. It's a pain that you can't even explain when you're missing someone every day. The law has not been on our side and they have not seen no justice. But um, we all know that what we do here, we pay here. We all got an answer to the high almighty God. So with that being said, I miss my sister every day. Every day, I was only 10 years old. She died when she was 15. <laughs> That's a pain that I don't feel like nobody should ever go through and I won't wish that pain on anybody. But when death come knocking on your door, it hits for real. But I just wanna say, whoever did that to my sister, I still pray for you. And hopefully one day <clears throat> they can find it in their heart to try to make amends with the Lord because that's all we got to answer to at the end of the day. But um, I love my sister and I rep every day of my life. I got it tatted on my on my arm. And that's not going nowhere until it's my time. But um, yeah, Swazos, we strong people. We're going to live forever. You know what I'm saying? As far as like with her spirit. Thank you. If you visit Soundview Park in the Bronx section of New York City, chances are you'll find people walking their dogs or going for a morning jog, maybe playing a game of soccer or a game of basketball. This comes off like a park like any other, but the truth is that Soundview Park has a dark history, known as a location where a lot of bodies have been found over the decades and where some of the most brutal assaults have taken place known as a location where crime is run rampant, and some of the stories that you might have heard about that took place in Soundview Park still remain unsolved. We're here to talk about one of those stories today, a case that has sat with a family for nearly three decades, and so far, there's been no information since. On today's episode of Evil Intentions, this is the story of Ava Suazo. Ava Suazo was born on June 8th of 1980 in the Bronx section of New York City. Ava and her family spent time in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx before moving to Longfellow Road in the Tremont section of the Bronx. Ava's father was the super at the building that they lived in. Ava's parents moved from Honduras to New York City in hopes of a better future for their family. And they were doing exactly that, doing everything they could to give their kids a good life. Ava and her family were some of many in the Garifuna community, a population of people coming from the Caribbean island of St. Vincent, with deep roots in African ancestry. As of today, areas of the Bronx hold more than 100,000 individuals from Guatemala and Honduras in the Garifuna community. Ava would attend IS-74 and graduate before attending Adlai Stevenson High School, where she made plenty of friends and she did very well. Those close to Eva had grown used to her big smile and her kind ways. Eva was described by those close to her as very sweet and very kind, and always in good spirits. According to those fortunate enough to know Eva, it was said that it was rare that she was seen alone in the neighborhood, since she had such a great relationship with her family. She could be seen with her brothers, her mother, and her father very often. Her mother was very strict, but only to the extent that she wanted her children to have the best future possible. She wanted Ava and her brothers to do well. Growing up in the Bronx in the late 80s and early 90s, she had every right to want to watch her children, since the influence of the streets can sometimes be stronger than people think. While Ava was known to be very sweet, she was also known to be someone who couldn't be bullied or spoken to a certain way. She would stand up for herself. She respected those who respected her. Ava had no enemies, and she was very much adored by those around her. But one day, in the spring of 1996, Ava just up and vanished. Nobody had seen or heard from her, which of course was very unusual. This wasn't something Ava would do. 
Ava wasn't contacting her family at all, and that's when her parents would report her missing on Monday, April 29th of 1996. On Tuesday, April 30th of 1996, two men were walking through right here in Soundview Park. And while they'd taken this walk many times before, this day was different because this time they stumbled upon a horrific discovery. The two men found themselves face to face with a dead body. The body that they found was thought to have been that of a 25 year old woman at first. The young woman had been slain in cold blood, shot four times in the chest and once in the head. She was shot a total of five or six times and her body was left there to be discovered later. The two men who discovered the body would later read in the daily news that the body that they found wasn't of a 25 year old woman and instead just of a 15 year old high school student. They remembered seeing a book bag on the ground not far from the crime scene and that's how they were able to identify that this was the body of Ava Suazo. Till this day, whoever did this to Eva still hasn't been held accountable. While there were never any real leads, one theory was that seeing as how Ava didn't have any enemies, maybe she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. While that might be possible, Ava's brother strongly believes that she was set up, and that others out there might know the truth about what happened that day. Those who were close to Ava can't imagine that anybody would ever want to do any harm to her. I'd like to thank the friends and family of Ava Suazo who came forward to provide details. Specifically, thank you to Ava Suazo's mother, her brother, and her friend Ed. When it comes to the case of Ava Suazo, this is still an unsolved case. Ava's family has been waiting for years for answers and hasn't received almost anything. Her family often hold vigils for her in her memory and they marched to the spot where she was found almost three decades ago. Ava's mother promises that she won't ever rest until her daughter's killer is brought to justice. Her family strongly believes that someone out there knows something and they're pleading that they come forward one day with any information. Rest in peace, Ava Suazo. You aren't forgotten. To anybody who might know any information on the Ava Suazo case, you're urged to contact authorities and you can do so anonymously. Let's help give this family some closure.